Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity, Wendisco. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Hadoop Summit 2015 for day three, about to kick off our third day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at Silicon Valley's own San Jose Convention Center. I'm John Furrier, my co-host George Gilbert, big data analyst at wikibon.org, and Jeff Frick, general manager of theCUBE. Uh, guys, day three, we're kind of winding down, and you got a good night's sleep last night, great networking at the event. Going out at night, I get to see all the action, see the relationships, and I think going to the events, Jeff, is all about relationships, and you know, you get to see people that we knew from the Horton Works days early on, people in the industry, some people change jobs, different positions, but ultimately, this is a really tight community. It's really fun to see people uh, growing into their jobs, either getting promoted, getting new jobs, starting companies. I saw at least four or five people that I knew from the early days at Cloudera. I mean, basically all the early employees pretty much have moved on from Cloudera and have gone on to start companies. I've seen guys start companies at a Horton Works, all kind of part of the Karitsu, part of the Hadoop community. It's been exciting to watch. And certainly yesterday was, was a great day. We had great content. And again, George, the themes are clear. We are seeing an era of innovation here that is like the railroad, as Herb Kunitz said. The railroads and electricity. This is utilities. This is like monopoly. You know, own the own the railroads, own electricity. This is a fabric of standardization that's happening with Hadoop but it's not just a Hadoop game. We heard from Teradata uh, saying uh, with, with the Hadap guys over there, we saw Presto, another SQL engine. We heard IBM exploring analytics. We heard WAN Disco really hit the nail on the head because they've successfully predicted two major shifts that they made bets on that pay, paid out huge for them. And their thesis is there's a world beyond Hadoop. So that to me is not so much a you know, pigeonholing of Hadoop more than just the expansive business opportunity. Hadoop is clearly growing. Hadoop will be standard. I mean, Herb, um, Merv at Gartner said 50 something percent will have uh, Hadoop in the enterprise. That's still a huge number. I still still like, it could be 70%. So, you know, we got people here with thousands of clients. I want to get your take, George, first. Um, what is your analysis of the market? Do you agree that Hadoop is growing and there's more besides Hadoop? We got Spark Summit uh, coming around the corner. We're expecting IBM to make a huge announcement. It's already kind of leaked out through Bloomberg. So um, Spark is out there. That's causing a flywheel of innovation and excitement that will fuel potentially Hadoop and other things. What's your thoughts? Well, it's pretty clear that ultimately we're going to get to the point where Hadoop is a utility, like railroads, like electricity. And like some of our guests said, right now, <laughs> the gauge on the railroad tracks are different between one and the other. Um, it's pretty clear that when we look at the like open data uh, uh, platform, that was really an attempt to say, you know, all these P Apache projects, there are several dozen of them, and in any um, Hadoop distro, there's about 17 to 20. We need to rationalize those, so. ISVs and partners targeting them can look at one platform, not you know a whole collection of projects. The big debate, and that we asked everyone who came on was, so where are we in this life cycle? And pretty much everyone said, we've got a certain set of repeatable solutions. You know, whether it's the data warehouse offload, whether it's the ad serving and personalization, um, but we haven't gotten to the point where there's like a huge library of solutions. So it's, we're, we're very much approaching the inflection point, and there are a lot of people buying it and you know, sort of getting comfortable with it, but I'm not sure I would say yeah. we're in the tornado yet. It's interesting, you bring up a good point because it's, it's, it's parsing the language of the industry and then translating that to the customer. And what I'm seeing is, this is a product, this is a technology, and we ask direct questions, is analytics a process or product? We ask questions, so what's going on with tooling and platform? These are industry words, and these are things that, oh, we've crossed the chasm, because there is a product, there is a technology, there is a process, and then product. Now, that is just the beginning of an enablement kind of culture now. You're starting to see that next generation of, this is not yet a product for the customer, because the solutions that come out of that from the practitioners renders itself in the customer market. So that, to me, is, is a, something that I'm seeing 
that's very important, which is there's so much more work to do. The industry shouldn't get ahead of themselves and congratulate each other, high five each other. We should be looking at it, okay, there now is another level of the leg of the journey uh, to do that. You know, you, you, you mentioned Wendisco, and they're very articulate about it, which is, look, we have this, you know, data fabric, they call it, and they're essentially separating the data from the underlying infrastructure by saying the data could be part of um, you know, Hadoop, it could be uh, in a relational database. This isn't shipping yet, but this is their vision. Could be a relational database, could be you know, on EMC type storage, but we're going to make it so that you don't care where it is. And that is a critical foundation step for building then applications that are sort of location independent and, and uh, infrastructure independent. And yes, so that's a part of making the, the platform more mature. The other thing I'm observing as we look at the close of this conference, day three, Jeff, I want to go to you on this because we've been doing something over the past year that's been not obvious to the public, it's, it's, but now it's, we're out there with theCUBE, is we've been looking at the social data, we've been looking at the community, we've been noticing a change in what we've been doing by adding more omni-channel-like uh, content pieces with images and links, and we've been looking at the community and looking at the conversations through our CrowdChat platform that theCUBE is enabling. And, and Jeff, I want to get your thoughts on this because this is a community. I want you to talk about those relationships. We've known some of these folks, like I said in, on the intro, like for many, many years, we've done all the Hadoop Summit events until O'Reilly kind of blocked us out of there. But now we've done every Hadoop Summit, we're going to continue to do it. This is an ecosystem that we've been, been embedded in from day one. And now we have social data. Comment on the relationships, comment on the people side of the equation. Yeah, I think the relationships are huge, John, and, and I, I think you made an interesting point, because we're seeing people now who have left some of the early adopter companies and are now at new startups. So there's this whole other kind of generation of startups looking for specific applications so they can own a marketplace to leverage the infrastructure that's come such a long way. I mean, we've been coming to this thing for five years now. It's kind of like we were at OpenStack a few weeks ago. You know, it takes a while for these things to go. And George, I like your comment about the, the rail grade. You know, there's a terrific book called The Box, which is about the shipping container, which you think is such a simple thing. Of course, they're all 40 foot shipping containers that can fit on a ship, a truck, and a plane. Or, and, and a rail car, but that took a long time to get that s settled in. So, you know, I think, um, and with the Hadoop, all the buzz, I always go back to Amara's Law. I don't think it gets enough buzz in the industry. We always talk about Moore's Law, but Amara's Law, which is that we, we overestimate in the short term the effects of technology, but we way underestimate the long-term effects. And I think it was Merv that said, you know, we're in the, the uh, the age of disillusionment, you know, we're kind of past that early hype, but that means real stuff starts to get done, the infrastructure components continue to mature and evolve, and now we'll see that next class of applications. And I think, John, I remember it was, it was a big question two or three Hadoop uh, summits ago, when are we going to see the applications? When are we going to see the applications? And it feels like we're getting pretty close to that. So on, on particularly the social data, what are you seeing out there? We've been in the conversation, we've been putting out this thesis of join the conversation because people want to join the conversation that aren't at the event. You had, we had Ariana here, we had our team back in Boston and, and Palo Alto and Dallas kind of monitoring the conversation space. What are you seeing? Well, we're seeing still, <laughs> not to be, uh, to brag, but still I think some of the best conversations are the conversations that we're generating here out of theCUBE. It's just the, 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 the nature of our format, the way that people sit down, we just get people to say terrific nuggets of information about what's happening in the past, the present, and the future. And those are really the catalysts that are bringing people together. Uh, just Merv today uh, will probably be a classic cube moment with water, uh, not being thrown on you, John, by John Cleese, but really is a glass half full or is a glass empty? And, and there's a lot of debate around the Gartner a report that came out about, like you said, 50%. Is that a good number or a bad number? And those are the types of things that get the people involved to have that conversation, because there is no right answer, right? It's all relative. And what's your point of reference? And what are you comparing it to? But clearly the trajectory yeah. is up and to the right. George, I want, George, go ahead. Just, I wanted to add to that half full, half empty comment, which was one of the themes that we kept hearing about um, from many of the guests was, We've got this incredible innovation on one side that you know the Apache Software Foundation is fostering, and you know an unending number of projects and growing. But then the distro vendors, you know Mapr, um, uh, HortonWorks, and Cloudera, there's they're trying to keep up with the different release cadence and try and create a coherent platform. 
but in doing that, they're they're exposing a lot of complexity to the administrator, ad administrator, the developer. So you know, there's this tension, and we haven't figured out how to resolve it yet, and that's partly what's slowing us down. Guys, I want to get your thoughts, George, and particularly your analysis on on the um, the the evolution of Hadoop, the HortonWorks role in the ecosystem, vis-a-vis the expansion of the scope of Hadoop and big data in general. So one of the things that's becoming clear to me out of this is, is that, and through the, the met, by the way, Hortonworks messaging, I thought, is solid. They look good, they're tight on their messaging. But what's interesting, we asked the ODP question, because it's kind of like the firecracker you want to you know, get going. For us, certainly we like to light the match and get the firecracker going, but Sean Connolly made his quote, he said, it's like the housewives of Hadoop, it's like this bickering contest going on between you know, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and others saying, hey, you know, and, and the press loves that because it's just, it, it's, it gets into the nuances of the inside baseball. But that, putting that aside, ODP is real because of the, just the players involved. You cannot ignore IBM, you cannot ignore the, the size and scope of the players involved in ODP. And what's interesting is, if you look at what Hortonworks is doing by saying, we're the railroad, we're going to lay the tracks down to get some standardization, and you have ODP as a consumption downstream, you have an interesting thing, and, and I want to bring this up because I have a search background, so I look at Google search. Google search is organic search, it's pristine, it's you know pure algorithmic, and the quality of, of their organic search is good. And they have the ads on the right-hand side called out on top. So you know the difference between an ad and organic search. So in a way, Hortonworks' strategy is to be, let's win the open source, contribute there, and let's make ODP a consumption option for folks like IBM. So interesting strategy, completely clean, and they've been, Interesting, they haven't changed their, 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 their move on that. They've said, we're going to stay in open source, and now we have this consumption vehicle, ODP. That makes a lot of sense from my standpoint. I, mean, I just can't, I mean, I've been trying to shoot holes in this thing from day one, and I just don't see any holes. I mean, if someone wants to consume a reference architecture or some baked code base. It's, it's, a, perfect, um, it's a perfect answer to this problem of we have these ever broadening distributions that you know have approaching two dozen component projects within a distribution and so Hortonworks, IBM, Pivotal, others, they get together and they're saying okay let's standardize on a core of those make that the standard gauge tra railroad track and you know if you want to big uh, build a wider car on it, a w railroad car, you can but the wheels are going to have to stick on that track and the example you're using is the ad unit, you know, next to the Google search results. We're going to all agree on the size of that ad unit, and then, you know, all the other stuff we leave open to innovation. But over time, we'll standardize more and more. Yeah. And so I, I think, think I, I, I agree, and, and and this is what uh, one thing as as I've been in, involved in the enterprise business for 30 years, I know the CIOs have worked with them and sold to them launch systems. Here's one thing that enterprises hate. I want to get your thoughts on this. Enterprises hate when there's a scorpion that could bite them. You know the old joke: the scorpion wants to go across the river and, <laughs> and promises not to bite the guy and poison him. And then he but it's halfway through bites and he goes, "Why did you say you promise? I'm a scorpion. That's what I do." <laughs> so you know, in a, in, in a way, that joke kind of applies to the enterprise. They don't want someone to come and saying, "Hey, we're here to replace Oracle. We're here to do all this stuff." The issue is, is that I am just a fact that I could get burned. So I think this is the challenge for Cloudera and others is you can't be shifting your strategy all the time. You've got to stay true to the enterprise. You have to give them comfort and trust. And I think you know, that is something that we have to look at because if ODP gets legs, it's going to cause some friction in the market of who consumes what version. I think that's a train wreck for somebody down the road. What's your thoughts? Well, the, the interesting thing is, you know, all infrastructure software sort of is headed in this open source direction. And several people on the on the uh, on the cube over the last uh, day or two have talked to us about the Red Hat analogy. Um, but Red Hat was in a position to take all these different components and put them in a release as an operating system. The the challenge with Hadoop is the definition of what goes into this platform is broadening all the time, and Cloudera is doing a good job of pack, pack, packaging it all up, but it's their packaging. So if you want to move to a different distro, it's not all that easy because someone else will have curated a whole bunch of different components. Um, yes, each component is open source, um, but 
you know, the, the ODP, some people, there, there are a lot of cynical reasons why people offer, you know, hey, um, Pivotal didn't want to put all the resources into maintaining its own distro. Um, but, but basically it's, uh, the, the value add, well, Claudia, I, I mean, first of all, I think Cloudera's yeah. got a good strategy. I'm not saying that they're the Scorpion, but what I'm saying is, if the market shifts, Cloudera could get flat-footed, but they're winning right now. So, from their standpoint, they have a strategy. They're winning big deals like Apple, you know, big licenses. So they're in their lane. I don't see them shifting. If they do shift, or the fact that they they can't deliver the enterprise wide, is it all Cloudera or not all Cloudera? That to me is still an open question that I want to dig into because if I'm an enterprise, I now I'm seeing thousand flowers blooming and I'm seeing distros pop up, I'm seeing a lot of organic innovation. Not like what Shadow IT did for cloud, I'm seeing that with Hadoop where people are just playing with doing POCs and you know, uh, you know have five different versions laying around and all of a sudden you're raining it in. That is an issue. So I'm I'm looking at that because the new enterprise market is don't burn me. I've got it to be plug and play, I've got to be interoperable and I need choice. That seems to be the 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 the, the, the vibe. So with that, a one size fits all doesn't work in my opinion. In my opinion. I'm just saying that's my, my take. The part where, where Cloudera is trying to differentiate um, appears to be in the, the management layer and in the governance around the data. In other words, they'll say, we'll tell you where the data came from, we'll make sure you know it's trustworthy, and we'll make sure it's easy to manage your um, Cloudera distribution of Hadoop. And the Hortonworks guys were coming from behind with things like Ambari to manage it and Zeppelin to put a, a UI around it, uh, I think in, in that case for um, like data scientists. Um, and so that's catching up. Um, but ultimately, I mean, we have to be realistic. Yes, we call them railroads and, and electricity, but the real value add was all the applications that were built on top of those. You know, I the agree. railroads, ironically, never really made that much money because they were so expensive to build and, and maintain, and frankly, uh, utilities as well. It was all the industries that were built on top of those that was that, that was where the money was. And so as, you know, this may not be a perfect analogy, but once we standardize this infrastructure, that's where we're going to see some real uh, wealth creation. And that's where we see like with, with Avi Meta from Trisada, you know, he is a very specific company built for a very specific application in the financial services market where he can leverage the underlying infrastructure, but that's just an enabler to right. really go out and deliver a solution to his client base that's buying his, his application. And what's interesting, Avi's made a great point before where you know, as a startup, and I think John, you asked, um, the question, where should startups come and play in the space? And as I look out behind you, John, there's all kinds of little tiny tables with, with new companies, is you know, find an application space, a problem space, that you can actually be the number one or two player leveraging this infrastructure, use your domain expertise and, and, and your application development skills to take down a thing where you can be one or two, and we're starting to see that. You know, and the where we had infrastructure software where someone could build a giant company, an Oracle and the Oracle Relational Database, it was not really, you couldn't really port applications between them easily. Um, and so only the big ISVs for the most part could, and administrators were really trained on one and not the other. So you could, you could build a real platform business. Um, here, it's open source. The interfaces are, you know, very similar. You've got multiple suppliers. It's not like you're going to build a, a $10 billion business or, you know, a $20 billion business and a 50% gross um, operating margins on this. As a platform business. As but a you, platform. But you can as an application, yes. right? And especially yes. in the API economy. And yeah. I know we way overuse the Uber example too much, but, you know, break it down in its components parts. It's, it's GPS and a payment system. And you know the other part is look at look at the sort of one of the critical value add components on this Hadoop platform, all the SQL engines. There, you know, we're getting close to two dozen and counting. It's like you know hunting, you know, it's hunting uh, geese. You know, you shoot one out of the sky, another one shows up. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, well, you know who's gonna like that is. Uh... Rob Beard, he's a, he's a big hunter, <laughs> from what I heard. Um, okay, this is a wrap for this segment, but we got a big day here. we got Bloomberg R&D, we got uh, Peter Goldmacher, who was fantastic on theCUBE in New York City. Great analysis, he's now running strategy and market development at uh, Aerospike. 
a great hire by Aerospike. Uh, we got IBM, Anjul uh, is coming on, VP of Big Data An Analytics, BMC. John Finelli, ex Citrix, and now with Data Turn coming on. Looking forward to that conversation. Informatica and Rackspace. We've got a lot of great guests coming in to wrap up the day. We're going to hold it together. Again, three days of wall to wall coverage. This is theCUBE live in Silicon Valley at Hadoop Summit 2015. We'll be right back after this short break.